open the April the 26th regular meeting for the Bethel and Wetlands Commission. And I'd like to start by the commissioners introducing themselves. I'm Ken Stevens, chair. Um, Laura. Uh, Laura Ferguson, commissioner. Thank you, Pat. Pat, Pat Barrafort, secretary. Happy. Happy, you're on mute. Uh, no. Happy Galvis, recording secretary. Thank you. Don't forget Greg. Nope, I was going he, on the next page. Oh, okay. <laughs> Greg Johnston, commissioner. Dave McCall, I'm in the wetlands agent. We also have Barry Parfit, consulting engineer with Wright Pierce Engineering in attendance tonight on behalf of the town of Bethel. Thank you. We have um, several items on the agenda tonight. Uh, the first of which is the public hearing for 64 Wooster Street, uh, which we've been covering several weeks now, several meetings. Um, I, I, it's, we're continuing the public hearing at the moment. Um, I would ask um, first, David, if you have any questions of the applicant. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm actually in a position to, to have the applicant speak first. That's, that's how um, we've been um, conducting these public hearings so far, Ken. Um, to my knowledge, we, we don't have any uh, new comments from the applicants uh, uh, subsequent to their uh, most recent comments that they gave to us uh, dated April 10th. Uh, of course, uh, if, if the applicant has anything that they wish to further present uh, in addition to that, uh, I, I would welcome them to do that first before my comments, Ken. All right. Anybody representing the applicant? Yeah, I, I, I guess Mr. Stevens, I'll go. Um, Steve Trunk is for the record, I'm a licensed uh, PE in Southbury representing the applicant. Um, as David noted, we sent uh, a revised uh, letter plans, a letter from uh, JMM Wetland Consulting uh, to him by email. I think it was actually on April 12th, um, you know, well in advance of the hearing. Um, the letter is pretty much the same as the one we submitted uh, last time, but I, in light of comments uh, made by some of the neighbors, we added uh, some information primarily starting on page three about the condition of um, uh, runoff on Worcester Street itself. Um, I went out and took photographs on March 23rd. Um, water comes down the shoulder of Worcester Street on uh, the side of number 64 and just uh, past the culvert, there's a, a leak off, basically, it's just a low point, the water drains across the shoulder and into the intermittent stream um, that runs along um, the property line of number 64. Um, there is no uh, catch basins running up the hill, it just comes down the gutter line, there's also no curbing, so it's running between the edge of the pavement and the edge of the grass. Um, we also looked at the culvert itself that goes under Worcester Street. It's a 24-inch concrete pipe. Um, there was no debris or sediment at the inlet at all on page five of my letter. Uh, There's an enlargement of the inlet. There's absolutely no sediment in the pipe whatsoever. So while maybe there's other places along this intermittent stream, as was brought up by one of the neighbors last time, there were sediment issues. They don't exist uh, here at all. Um, uh, I spoke with uh, the owner, Dave. Um, he has a verbal agreement with Nita Hill, who resides at 60 Worcester Street, to clean out debris um, if needed in the stream. Um, she's up in her 80s, I guess. So, you know, uh, Dave has been doing this and he will continue doing this until he sells the property at 64 Worcester Street. So we don't need any other maintenance. He does what's needed. He's been doing what's needed to remove any sticks that might you know, fall in there where stuff could potentially clog. As far as the culvert itself under Worcester Street, that is the jurisdiction of the Bethel DPW, um, as is any other culvert or catch basin um, in the town of Bethel. Um, only about uh, 46 linear feet of this intermittent drainage ditch is actually on the property of 64 Worcester Street. The rest of it 
um, is on the property at number 60 Worcester Street. So we actually own about 20% of it um, and not own the other 80%. Um, we also provided a map that shows the uh, existing uh, trees that are out there. Uh, mostly they're kind of poplars, they're not a great quality tree um, along there. There's a large willow tree towards the back. Um, and we did not show the stumps that, you know, uh, from other trees that were taken down and that had been discussed at uh, prior, uh, prior meetings. Uh, one change that we did make was we pulled the, um, from the retaining wall, there will be a curtain drain, whether it is a rock cut or a modular block retaining wall on the Western side of the building that will come around the back side of the new building. Um, we pulled the discharge point uh, uphill 50 feet. So that is now 68 feet from uh, the intermittent drainage ditch. Um, and we also have two rows of Filtrex socks downhill of this. Again, this is water from off site where the slope above where there is no change in drainage patterns. Presently, it drains right across the property. So we pulled it back to be farther from the, uh, the stream itself and to you know, just allow that water to go there. I don't think you're gonna see a lot of water coming out of that pipe because there's no evidence of any seepage at the current time. Uh, we previously addressed, you know, responses to uh, all of Barry's other questions at around five o'clock or so. I did not see any new information on the, um, the Google Drive uh, for that. Um, and again, Jim McManus's letter um, is a soil scientist, you know, confirms what uh, he had given me previously and which I incorporated into my letter that, you know, there is no adverse impacts uh, from the work proposed in the upland review area or from the discharge of the stormwater um, into the intermittent stream. And that's really all I have tonight. Thank you, Mr. Trinkus, appreciate it. David? Okay, Th thank you, Ken. Uh, I'll just tack on to that by by continuing where we left off from the last meeting. Um, I, I think we had exhausted a lot of uh, d discussion that would otherwise, uh, you know, stem from what would be considered the, the existing conditions out there and, and what's happened to them over the past few months. Uh, there, there was uh, discussion that also entailed some uh, pro uh, some work that had been done uh, by the Public Works Department uh, near the area of um, Keeler Street, Cauley Avenue, and uh, Worcester Street here. There is this ditch that um, has water that is ultimately received by the intermittent ditched water course where we're here, where my cursor is at 64 Worcester Street. Um, there was, uh, I had a discussion that, that would have taken place uh, with the Public Works Department uh, long before uh, it had subsequent to our previous meeting had where the maintenance work that was done has uh, had been considered a, a intermittent water course or a, a, um, a wetland of any kind, but it is not. It is, it is essentially a, a, a ditch that, that just so happens to facilitate the movement of water. What, what their activity was uh, in this area here where, where my cursor is showing, and I'll go into an aerial view to, to kind of hopefully uh, shed some light more specifically for for those uh, residents that, that know this area. Um, there was equipment that was brought in here to excavate out excess material from this ditch. Um, it is to my knowledge that, um, you know, since, since the last meeting took place, all of these activities have been completed. Um, all of the equipment that, um, you know, was used to facilitate this maintenance, which to my understanding, happens every 20 years per the supervisor from the public works department uh, is, is now complete. So, so there's no longer any activity that would otherwise disturb soil that may move uh, in the direction of the subject site here. Really what needs to be uh, the, the focus of the commission, um, and, and I think I've stressed this a few times, so forgive me if, if I'm exhausting myself in doing so, but we're just focused on what the activities are at the site, what the improvements are at the site. 
Uh, in other words, the storm water management system, um, the additional impervious area, and of course, the structure that is ultimately leading to those two being created. I, I, I really don't have any additional comment that I, that I can give <laughs> for those tonight. Um, it, more or less the, the discussion that could be had for those uh, ha has been exhausted. W what I would advise the commission at this point is that, you know, um, you know, barring any uh, significant discoveries by the public uh, or our project engineer, which, which I don't think uh, they're going to be making tonight, um, that we, the, the commission is in a position to close this public hearing. And, and in doing so, uh, the hourglass, so to speak, uh, gets flipped. And we have a 35 day period, uh, should the commission decide to close this public hearing tonight uh, for the commission to render this decision. Um, our next meeting would be held, uh, a regular meeting that is on May 24th. Um, whether or not that the commission wants to schedule a meeting in between now and the 24th to possibly discuss any further questions, you know, we, we can, uh, you can certainly ask some of Barry tonight. Um, uh, you know, if, if, if there are any that, that he can answer, but we have, we have documentation from the engineer with their latest revised comments. We now have a bona fide report from the soil scientists, which we finally received. It, it, it looked like um, uh, the project engineer, Mr. Trinkus had um, essentially taken uh, the language from a report that they would have otherwise established themselves and and put it in their own, which is which is good to see um, that we that we finally have that. Um, I there really isn't anything else that that we can um, discuss on this that that would be new in my opinion. Uh, now now I would say we have the information that we need to discuss and for um, you know for the for the commission to. Uh, rendered your decision. I, I don't think um, I don't ha I have anything else at this time. So I would suggest um, if the commission has any questions that they ask them at this time, or Ken, if you want to open this to the public briefly, if, if they have any uh, questions or comments. Thank you, David. First, I'll ask the commission if anyone has any additional questions for Mr. Trinkus or any of the other uh, applicant represent representatives on the call. Um, I personally don't have any further questions. Does anybody on the commission have any questions? Okay. Um, and I have a couple of questions, sorry. Certainly, Patrick. Hi, <clears throat> just, uh, just a couple of quick questions. I had asked for um, a, a picture or a diagram of the exit there with the, uh, where the, it's, it's gonna be close to the stream. I just wanted to see how that was going to look. Was that provided? Uh, Pat, Steve Trinkus, what exactly are you talking about? Where it goes under Worcester? Where it goes under Worcester, you have the exit driveway coming out right there. I just asked to uh, uh, see a diagram of how that was going to happen with the trees and tree removals. I, I asked to see okay. a diagram on that. Uh, David, can you let me share my screen, please? Uh, screen sharing is enabled, Mr. Trinkus. Okay, give me one second, please. This is my second Zoom meeting out of three tonight, so <laughs> <laughs> a lot of PDF things up here. So let me go here. Uh, okay, this uh, this is sheet number, I think, three of the set, or two of the set. Um, Pat, this shows the driveway. Um, there's a six inch maple that's right off the head wall. And then there's some other trees kind yeah. of coming parallel to the stream. There's one shrub, the driveway itself and the grading is outside uh, the shrub line. So uh, no additional shrubs or trees are gonna be removed for the uh, driveway coming back out onto Worcester. It's all in the okay. lawn area. So we're not taking anything else down. There's nothing there except grass. Okay, and the water that's coming down that driveway, I know some's going into uh, the Caltech. Um, yeah. The, the part that's down onto Worcester Street, once it hits Worcester Street, with it, it makes a right hand turn 
and follows the gutter line and the into the uh, weak, weak off is just about here where my mouse is right above the H and E of the head wall. It's just a slight graded uh, point. It's a picture of that is shown on page three of my letter. It's not very well defined in the field, but the water follows that way um, and drains off. So the water comes down, you know, the uh, side of Worcester and then just, you know, right here, just kind of, you know, comes across and then enters the stream just as overland flow. There was no eroded ditch um, as you came down to the stream and it enters the ditch and goes under Worcester Street. Okay. Do you, because you're changing that from, I guess what you call pervious soil to impervious blacktop, um, how much more water do you anticipate going into the stream? There's actually a reduction we have. We're over detaining what I need to. We're actually detaining uh, the runoff from around 12,000 square, uh, 10,000 square feet. Um, and we only have an increase of 9,000 and change. At the present time, almost 6,919 square feet drained from the two driveway or from the one driveway and the sidewalks out onto Worcester Street. Um, because of the design, that is being reduced to um, 5,212. So it's almost a 25% reduction of impervious area draining actually out to Worcester Street. Okay. So we have less impervious cover draining out to that gutter line than currently exists today. Okay, um, so I had also asked for um, some type of maintenance for, um, I don't want to call it stream, it's not stream, the, the area going to the pipe. Um, I, I did hear you say that you have an agreement with the next door neighbor, a uh, verbal agreement uh, to clean out brush or branches that fall in there. Um, is there a way to get that in writing that, that the, the opening up the pipe will uh, remain cl uh, clear or be maintained. Well, Dave, the owner has been doing that since he's owned the property. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried about when the owner, and I, I'm sure Dave will continue to do so. I'm worried about when the property sold, if it's not in writing in the records, then if the other property owner that buys the property um, does not feel like doing it, they do not have to. So I'd rather see something in writing on it. Well, it, it's, it's a private water course and it's really an agreement between the two people and there is one. Um, uh, I don't know if Mr. Marcus is still on the line. I know he had a, a conflict in Brookfield. Okay. Um, but I mean, you know, it behooves Dave to continue doing the maintenance here because it's a, it's a, it's a benefit. Um, and I'm sure, I don't know if, uh, if you would like to comment on this or not. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm sure that he will continue to do so. Um, it's just again after, and you know, it could be 20 years from now or you know, however that works out. Also, uh, other concern I had was placement of snow removal. There is no placement of snow removal. Everyone's got to come out and move their vehicles. No, um, no. Has no, there been no, any solution for that? Um, it, it, that's an incorrect statement because okay. we do have a spot. We've had it on the plan. Snow removal will be off the edge of the parking lot here. And as any parking lot I've done in town or even in other places lately, you know, a plot, if we got a substantial snow, they come in, they plow the driveway. Um, people are at, if they, if some spaces are not uh, parked, People, you know, uh, they'll plow the snow from them, ask the people to park, move their cars there while the guy just finishes plowing the rest of it and pushes it off the edge of the parking here where it can melt from underneath the pile over time, go across the grass and enter, enter the stream. Basically right now, the snow gets pushed off the back of the driveway and that's what happens now. So- All right, and Steve, I apologize. I don't see where your cursor is there. Oh, the snow, the snow storage area, this heavy, shape here, Pat, just off the parking. Oh, behind, behind the uh, dumpster. Yeah, behind the dumpster and over the okay. sewer easement. Yeah. Yep, okay. So. All right, and so the all the snow from the driveway on the other side in the parking lot is gonna be placed there? It would be plowed there, yeah, because it, the Good. driveway is right along the property line and the other Good. driveway is a, only a few feet on that side of the line. So you can't throw it over there because you're throwing it on top of somebody else's land. Okay. So the plow guy would have to plow it from 
uh, this from the west side towards the center and then plow it over to here. Okay. And the other question that I had was actually for uh, our engineer, uh, the calculations with the Caltech chamber, um, are, are, have they been reviewed and are, are accurate? Dave, he is on tonight. Is yes, uh, Barry Parfit. Hi, Barry. Hi, Pat. Um, yeah, Barry Parfit, right, Pierce. Um, you have to reply to that. We did review the calculations um, where our one comment that we had comment 13 and 14 regarding the overall pre and post development areas, we found not to be the same. The post development was slightly smaller. It didn't include the, the area to the west above the retaining wall. We didn't see updated figures for that. So our comment still stands from the previous memo dated um, uh, March 15th. And so um, that's our one comment. That's one of the comments that is um, among a few that stand uh, for the commission's review. But um, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Commissioner. Yes, it does. And Steve, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I know you went over and I apologize. The, the piece in front of the uh, Caltech chamber that's for um, um, pollution removal, is that correct? No, yeah, this is an, what's called an ADS water quality unit. Okay. It's a 36 inch diameter pipe that has basically two preformed weirs in it, Pat. One comes up from the bottom first, okay. some sediment is trapped in front of it. The second one, about another third of the way down, comes down from the top. So you trap oils and grease in that. And the manhole at the head of this directs the water quality flow, which is the uh, flow rate from the water quality volume of one inch of rain into this system. Larger storm events bypass, but always that first inch of runoff, the dirtiest water always goes through the ADS unit and then into the Caltech system. And then we have peak rate attenuation coming out. And, and I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with it. Is there maintenance required with that? The maintenance is really at the manhole and the ADS unit has manhole covers to grade to remove okay. sediment and the oils and grease, you okay. know, if is as necessary. Okay. And again, talking, so. Mr. Parfit, I apologize not being familiar with that unit that that ad adequately remove uh, the pollutants. Yeah, we did check the sizing. It didn't, it did, um, it did match the sizing okay. for the, the site. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Pat, just, just just for embellishment here, and I and I think Mr. Trinkus could could bring this up on his screen. The the detail for the ADS quality unit that's being discussed. There's a cross section of it that's on sheet nine. I saw that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I you know there, there's there's you know specs and there's uh, knowledge if it actually works or not. That's okay. So no, I'm 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 good. Thank you. You're welcome. Chairman, that's all the questions I had. Thank you, Patrick. Anyone else from the commission have any questions? Okay, at this time, I'll open it up to the public if there's anyone on board that has any questions. Please keep in mind, if you have any questions, we are here to talk about inland wetlands, and we're not here to talk about planning and zoning. If uh, you have a question, please state your name and your address and direct your comments to the commission. Um, when all comments have been heard, the commission or the applicant will address those comments that have been made. And, and real quick, uh, be, before the, the public does offer comment, if they do have any, I'll just go through how it's done. Um, for uh, persons who have participated in uh, uh, land use commission meetings before, the, the process is more or less the same. Uh, but for those who are new or, or just need a refresher, you would access the uh, toolbar at the bottom of the Zoom app, which you would select the participants icon from, and uh, there would be a list of attendants here in tonight's meeting. Next to your own name, you would click the option to raise your hand, and that lets us know um, that you have uh, comments you would like to offer uh, for the commission's consideration tonight. Thank you, David. But I'm not seeing anybody at this time that has any, Ken. 
Okay. Um, Mr. Trinkus, any further comments? Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have any. I don't know if Attorney Marcus has any closing wisdom, but I'll turn it over to Neil at this point. All right. Thank you. You beat me to it. Thank you. Um, no, I just, uh, again, I think that the commission has a record dealing with the issues that would normally be under the jurisdiction of an Inland Wetlands Commission, which are the impacts on the wetlands and water courses that are on the site. And of course, the only thing that is on the site, there are no wetlands, but the only thing that's on the site is a intermittent uh, drainage ditch that uh, Steve has explained, uh, Steve Trinkus has explained how the water will be uh, uh, handled that would be running uh, towards draining towards that uh, uh, stream. And the material will be handled in a drainage system using very standard uh, recognized uh, uh, modalities uh, in terms of how we treat uh, uh, drainage water, surface water. So there's been a lot of discussion uh, throughout this hearing about issues, as Steve uh, Trigas said earlier, about issues involving work previously done uh, or recently done by the uh, Bethel Department of Public uh, Utilities and our public works, whichever. The, the, those really are um, interesting to discuss, but not really germane to what we're asking you to do. We're asking you to evaluate the wetlands and water courses and their direct impacts by work on the site. And this is, site is somewhat unique in that it has virtually no regulated activities um, with the exception of a review of upland activities. So I think the commission has a, has a, a record before it on which it can act at this point. Uh, I think that the applicant has addressed uh, through his engineers, uh, all of the, uh, of the questions that have been raised by the commission, by the commission's reviewing engineers and, and by the public. So at this point, I would only ask that you focus your deliberations on the issues that directly impact wetlands and water courses. And I think if you do that, uh, you can come to a, a decision that will allow this activity to go forward. It is, it is affordable housing. Uh, it's uh, under 8-30G. <coughs> Attorney Marcus, I, that really has no bearing on this application. Forgive me for interrupting. But... Oh, I know that. I know okay. that. It has absolutely no, I'm just, you know, it's a, okay. It's housing for a need to serve a town of Bethel. But what does have bearing is the fact that if you actually read the paper, you will see that before the state legislature right now, the issue of creating the very type of housing that we're trying to create here, in which the town of Bethel has supported. I can't, uh, Bethel has been actually uh, uh, in the forefront of allowing in its transit oriented district and in its affordable housing, the type of housing that the state of Connecticut is really seeking and the groups that are talking about desegregate Connecticut and the Senate bill that currently talks about limiting zoning at a local level to make it more regional. All of those mitigate towards the purpose of this housing. But the purpose of the housing can only move forward if the Wetlands Commission focuses on its purpose, which is direct protection of wetlands and water courses, not to in any respect, try to deal with the problems that people may have with public utilities, not in this application. So a lot of the discussion uh, about, uh, uh, about the application really was interesting. Uh, I think it was uh, handled correctly in its response, but at the end of the day, this really is a, a wetlands application and there are no wetlands. And we would ask that you uh, focus on that to come up with a decision so that the rest of the project can move forward in the way that it's, it's proposed for the purpose, which seems to be the right purpose given the current uh, uh, tenor of the planning and zoning in the state of Connecticut. So even though I agree with, with David that you really can't consider 
that this is uh, if it were if it were affordable housing it, that impacted wetlands that would be different. But you certainly can consider uh, that the wetlands activity itself uh, is negligible, uh, if at all. So, on that basis, I would encourage you to uh, to vote in favor. And to the extent you want to attach reasonable conditions, we always agree that when they're reasonable, they add to the benefit of the project generally. So that's it. The applicant rests and uh, we'll leave it in your hands. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marcus. Appreciate the input. Um, now, David, I never remember whether I need a motion to close or if I can just close the public hearing. So I need... I, I, was, I would suggest that we, that we have a, a motion to close um, but, but before we do that, let's let's make sure we have our our plan, if we will, uh, a, a set in place. If the commission does opt to close the public hearing for this application tonight, as I mentioned uh, not too long ago, the hourglass, if you will, gets flipped, and the 35 days for us to render a decision, that is the time period within, begins. Uh, so in other words, we would have to have a decision more or less rendered by our next regular meeting, May 24th. We can do anything uh, between now and then that is within uh, what, what our, uh, you know, our, our abilities allow us to if, if the commission wants to schedule a special meeting. But I, I would say it, it would make sense to have that planned and, and thought out before we close the public hearing. I, I don't see a, a part I was of gonna, I was gonna make that suggestion after I close, but if it's better to do it beforehand, I'm happy to do I so. I just, yeah, yeah, I, I just wanna make sure we have- I would suggest to the commission, to the commission that we convene a special meeting for finalizing our discussions on this application for Monday, the 10th of May at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Um, if that's convenient for everyone, uh, and if I need a motion for that, I'll make that motion and would ask for a second. Second. Craig, Craig Johnston, um, Commissioner, I have a question. Why do we need a special meeting? I, I, I would the time, say the time frame allows us to make a decision at the next meeting, doesn't it? It, it, it does. Then why do we why do we need a special meeting? So, so the the thought process with a with a special meeting, Greg, is that we have four other agenda items for tonight's meeting. So, so I, I would not want to exhaust the commission to try to discuss everything that's come with this uh, application at, at least three, if not four months of material, uh, you know, after getting through uh, those other applications tonight. Um, and, I, and I certainly wouldn't want the, uh, the commission to be in a position to only have one night at its disposal to discuss this application, i.e. Uh, our, our next regular meeting that would otherwise happen on the 24th. Um, it, it, it's, it's for the commission's benefit that, that we have, I, I think a, a, a special meeting, um, the, the, the more time that you have to review this material, we're, we're, you know, once you close the public hearing, you're not getting anything else. You're just working with what you already have. So, um, so my other question is we've gone over this for how many months now? and nothing tonight was presented was really new. Okay. So we already have the information. What do we have to wait for? Okay, okay. If you haven't made your mind up by now, I don't see anything that would change it. Okay, okay. I would suggest, Greg, and it's entirely up to you and the other commission members, that I personally would like the opportunity to go through the material again. I've reviewed what was presented just recently, but I would like to see what review in my mind what else has been presented in the past to make sure that I have a firm grasp of all those details. You and the rest of the commission can overrule me on that if you'd so choose, but my suggestion would be that we have a special meeting, as I indicated earlier, where we can fully discuss and come to a firm decision for the applicant. All right. I mean, we can vote on it, whatever. It's fine. So I think I made a motion for a special meeting and I think Pat seconded that. So those in favor, please. Aye. Anyone not in favor? 
Hi, me. Thank you, Greg. I think the majority rules and we yep. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, we're meeting for Monday the 10th at 7 p.m. And with that, I make a motion that we close the public hearing for 64 Wooster Street, Bethel, Connecticut. Can I have a second on that? Second. All in favor? Uh, uh, I, I would have um, Laura. I, oh, I, sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, Laura. Have you reviewed the materials for this application yet? Not all of them. Okay, so 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 I would say um, it would really be Ken, Pat, and Greg that are in a position to uh, vote on or make motions for the application at this time. I'll, I'll second that. Thank you, Patrick. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Public hearing is hereby closed. Thank you. Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Marcus, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Off to another one. <laughs> um, well, I'll ask, I'll Next item on the agenda is 25 Francis J. Clark Circle <laughs> for the construction of an industrial building. David, I believe we had left the last meeting Right. This this essentially is a placeholder. Uh, we we left it open because uh, with a site plan review, uh, you know, this is leaving a a review open, if you will, is is the only mechanism you have uh, to not uh, have it be closed, so to speak, or concluded. So, um, not not to put the cart before the horse with what I'm sure Mr. Wolf, who is uh, on this meeting tonight, would would otherwise excuse me say, um, but we did get response comments um, from Wright Pierce Engineering uh, dated uh, March 23rd. They were included in your materials. And uh, for, for what I understand, um, you know, all, all of their comments, uh, are either they have housekeeping items or they read as um, acknowledged. So there, there really isn't anything left that's outstanding from the municipal side, um, not to jump on Mr. Wolf's comments, but um, really we're, we're in a position to uh, conclude the site plan review and um, you know, make a decision on this application tonight. And as I was gonna say, David, I thought you, when we left the last meeting, had some questions or based on the recent material received, you had some questions on the separator mechanism being used. Uh, we, we do not have there at this time. Uh, the, a, a hydrodynamic separator is not included in the site plan sheet set, at least, at least to, to my understanding. That it's the commission's. The, it'll be in, in the commission's decision tonight if they so are inclined for a resolution of approval uh, as to whether or not they would include one in the site plans or uh, for the project development as a whole. Any thoughts from the commission? Further thoughts on that? Okay. Um, then David, I believe we're at a point that we should make a recommendation and take a vote. Do you agree? Yeah. Uh, let, let's just, Mr. Wolf. I, I see that you're in attendance tonight, and I and I don't David. want to just steam roll over you. Forgive me. Uh, did, did you have any comments that you wanted to offer? Uh, no, I think everything was addressed at the previous meeting. Um, if um, the commission um, wants a substitute for a hydrodynamic separator, uh, we could possibly look at, um, you know, a deeper sump catch basins um, for the three catch basin structures that are proposed. Uh, considering that it's an existing site, but if the commission uh, determines that they would prefer to have a hydrodynamic separator, um, you you could obviously uh, make that a condition of the uh, permit. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. If I remember correctly in the last meeting, um, it was suggested we use one there. 
if I recall correctly. I, I, I would suggest it, you know, this, this is a commercial parking lot. You are going to be having commercial vehicles idling <laughs> in this parking lot while uh, cargo or materials or trailers are unloaded for use either going into or leaving from the, the commercial building that's proposed. Yep, thank you. Greg, any questions? No, not at this time. Laura, have you had an opportunity to review the discussions previously held on this, on this application? Not this one yet. Okay, thank you. So um, you need to abstain from any voting on this. Okay. Um, with that, uh, David, if you don't have anything else, I would uh, make a motion that we approve this application with the inclusion of a hydro, and I'll say it wrong, I'm sure, hydrodynamic separator um, added to the plan. Can, can I jump on this real quick, Ken? I know you would. I knew you would. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, let's let's conclude the site plan review for this first. And then we can, uh, I believe there's a draft. If, if it's the consensus of the commission to approve this application, there is a draft resolution of approval that I would have us read through first. And then we would make a vote on the draft language that's in that draft, that resolution of approval. But let's come to a consensus that we want to discuss that later on in tonight's meeting. So I'll how do we close the site plan review? Uh, I, I, I would motion? just, I would just, yeah, a motion from the floor. Make a motion to close the site plan review. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. So we'll discuss the letter later in the meeting, David. Yes, that's right. Next item on the agenda is the right of way culvert on Codfish Hill Road. David, you want to address that? Uh, sure. Um, I, I believe we have in attendance tonight uh, Mr. Larry Rusecki from Wright Pierce Engineering. He's uh, been the lead on this project, and, and I believe he's doing this on behalf of the Public Works Department. Uh, we were supposed to have a discussion on this uh, starting at our previous meeting. Um, we are still within our 65-day review period for discussion on this. Um, so I believe Mr. Rusecki is here tonight to discuss uh, the culvert replacement project mm -hmm. on Codfish Hill Road. Um, so with further ado, uh, Larry, take it away. Great, thank you, David. Um, good evening, members of the, the commission. Um, I have a, a, a brief PowerPoint if you'd like me to share my screen. Screen sharing is enabled. <clears throat> are you able to see that? Yes, we are. Oh, geez. Sorry about that. I think I said my apologies on this. There we go. You can see it. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I clicked on something that wasn't supposed to be. So um, as David- Everyone does that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too many, too many Zoom meetings. Um, my name is Larry Rizeki. I'm a civil engineer that works for Wright Pierce. I'm here tonight on behalf of the town to present the Codfish Hill Road culvert project. Um, we submitted our, our Town of Bethel Inland Wetlands Commission application. We're concurrently uh, you know, providing and submitting applications to the Connecticut DEP for the non-diversion water permit application, as well as through the, the general permit, the Army Corps self-notification form. Um, the existing culvert in question um, is on Codfish Hill Road. Um, the, the stream is a semi-perennial uh, watercourse. Uh, it flows from south to north. Um, it's unnamed um, and the watershed is approximately 227 acres. It, it's a tributary to the Lime Kiln Brook, which is um, right by Route 302 to the north. Um, as you can see on the, on the left slide here, that's the inlet. 
There's three 30-inch um, diameter RCP pipes. Uh, and then on the downstream side, you can see as well, they're pretty much at the same inverts. The, uh, the head walls are field stone, uh, pretty much at grade to the travel way on the downstream or the outflow side of the culvert. Um, you, can, you can visibly see that the head wall is, is exceeded its life expectancy and, and is deteriorating uh, and falling over into the stream area. Um, so what we're proposing is this is our existing conditions in plan view, the three pipes, north is to the top of the page. Um, we're proposing a saw cutting and, and removing the pavement. There's two houses on, on the north side of the, the travel way. Um, removing the, the pavement, removing the culverts, creating a bypass to allow the, the stream flow conditions to occur during construction and installing a four foot by seven foot uh, precast box culvert. The, uh, the culvert itself will be buried approximately one foot. There'll be natural stream bed media hand placed within as well as large boulders on the sides to uh, enable habitat to, to cross freely uh, in both directions. Um, the new pavement cross section will be in accordance to the Connecticut DOT uh, roadway standards. Um, there will be new timber guardrails and curbing on each side, uh, as well as the low point of the roadway is right where the, the culvert crossing is. So there'll be two new catch basins uh, to um, allow the, the gutter line flow from Codfish Hill Road to be, um, you know, brought through the, the graded inlet and outlet into the existing stream. On the north side, um, there are breaks in the existing curbs where the, the water pretty much just flows through that break and into the stream today. On the south side, which is the bottom part of the screen, there is a catch basin on the easterly side that outflows to the stream, uh, as well as there's a break in the existing headwall where the water from the gutter line flows into the stream. So we're, we're merely mimicking the existing conditions, but putting it through a, a closed drainage system with a deep sump. Um, our plans and profiles are, are presented in the permit package. Um, and you can see the, the timber guardrails to uh, allow safe vehicular traffic, uh, gutter lines to control the runoff to those catch basins that I just mentioned. Um, as well as the cast in place, reinforced concrete headwalls on both the upstream and downstream sides of the culvert. Um, wetland impacts, um, the total length of the existing culvert today is approximately 30 feet. We're proposing a little bit longer, uh, more of a 35 foot total length. So there are some temporary as well as permanent impacts to the wetland areas. Uh, and those are measured in square foot. Um, the impacts are relatively small in the big picture of what we're doing here. Um, by reshaping, reworking the, the stream bed media, um, the existing conditions are pretty much going to be as is upon the completion of construction. Um, there will be, the most of the impacts are, re, are related to the, the installation of the new uh, cast in place headwalls on both sides of the culvert. Um, but there are, you know, there are impacts and that's why we're submitting to the Inlands Wetland Commission tonight. Um, if you have any questions, please, you know, interrupt, raise your hand. I'll, I'll be glad to ask or if I can just keep on moving. Um, that works too. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, this is what we're proposing for a, a bypass during construction. Um, ideally, construction would be occurring at, you know, when stream flow is the lowest, late, late July, early August, but obviously that depends on budgeting and timing of, of everything. Um, but this is what we're proposing and we'll work with the contractor to um, uh, go over his means and methods, but simply uh, sandbagging, coffer damming the existing stream to flow through a large diameter plastic pipe around the, the culvert while the new foundations being set and the concrete's poured. Um, this is temporary, uh, and then the conditions on the sides of the banks and so forth will be 
will be replicated and matched to existing. Um, with regard to hydraulic modeling and so forth, we designed the culvert to uh, the Connecticut DOT 25 year storm event, but we've also modeled the 50 and 100 year storm events. So the darker blue bars represent the existing uh, peak flow and CFS through the existing culverts and the light blue is what we're proposing. Um, there is more flow through the culvert for the reason that it's, it's a larger culvert to generally meet the, the requirements of the, the Connecticut DEP stream crossing standards. Uh, so the four foot by seven foot culvert is much larger than three 30 inch um, reinforced concrete pipes. Um, so this next slide is with respect to the water height. Uh, as mentioned, you know, it's the design storm was the 25 year storm. However, we do demonstrate that, you know, we can pass the 100 year. However, it is close to the top of the roadway elevation. And this is definitely a conservative model, uh, the TR20. However, this uh, may occur for a large storm event, which is approximately 7.2 inches within 24 hours uh, of rainfall. So that's pretty extreme. Um, but the design itself uh, provides one foot of freeboard um, of the peak flow with respect to the top of the culvert. And most importantly, there will be a detour required during construction. Um, the means and methods to install the culvert should go relatively quick, but more of the site work associated with the, the cast in place headwalls, preparing the foundation base, installing the culvert in pieces, um, manually installing the, the native bed material in the, the four sided you know, box culvert and buttoning everything up. So construction potentially could, could, could last 30 to 45 days. So a detour uh, will definitely be required for this particular project. The good thing is about the two, uh, the two neighbors that you know, are in close proximity to the stream and in, in the culvert, there, there are ways to 302 uh, that they can easily have, you know, police and fire safety vehicles get to access to their property and allowing them to do their daily business. So uh, the purpose of the project is to restore the natural stream, um, create a corridor for habitat to pass through, uh, reduce the frequency of flooding, um, provide you know free board um, for these larger storm events and meet the the local requirements for both um, you know the town and in conservation commission or inland wetland commission um, for impacts to the wetland areas. So um, tonight we're requesting approval for both the temporary and the permanent impacts to these resource areas, uh, so the town can install this new culvert. And that's it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Commission, any questions? Hey, David, do you have any questions for the applicant? No questions at this time, Ken. So I'm sure I'm going to screw this up, but I propose we close the review. Make a motion that we close the review. Do You've got it right, Ken. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Peter, and thank you for joining us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Um, do we want to continue with this one, David, or do we want to move on to Good Hill Road and then come back to this? Uh, I, I would have us move on. We, we have applicants that are waiting patiently for their presentations. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is uh, revision to previous approvals for nine Good Hill Road. Mr. Draper, I see that you're on the call. Um, are you representing yourself or is Mr. Marcus gonna represent you on this one? Okay, Mr. Draper, you're on mute and so are you, Mr. Marcus. I believe we're, uh, you know, the, the possibility for Mr. Mizuko to be here. Uh, um, he, he may be the one that, that um, 
that would have comments. I'm not sure if Mr. Marcus is, is held up at the moment. Um, it, should we come back to this item, Mr. Marcus? You want to unmute him, David? Let me unmute. Uh, Mike uh, said that he had a conflict this evening. I'm not sure. Is he planning to come back, David? Did you hear from him? Excuse me. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I, I I had muted myself. Um, my last email from. My last email from Mike uh, this afternoon said that he had a conflict tonight and that the timing of uh, his other event might conclude, might coincide. Uh, Tim will be, uh, or Mr. Draper will be at, at, the, uh, at tonight's meeting. And he also said that you would be at, at tonight's meeting if he was not able to get uh, in on time. Okay, I, uh, I think that he had sent you a report on the changes to the site plan that uh, we're asking you to approve as a modification of the prior uh, review permit that we'd received for the larger uh, facility. So I think we need to try to go forward. I'm gonna try to pull up Mike's letter. Do you have a copy of, of his letter to you, David, and the commission? Uh, yes, I do. I, and, and I can put that on my screen. If, if Yeah, it might be a good idea to take a look at that and to take a look at his report. Okay. I'm going to try to get rid of the Brookfield Commission real quick so it's not. David, can you make it larger? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Perfect. I, I should advise the, the commission, this is just a, a set of responses from Mr. Mizuko that we received today that uh, stem from my comments to uh, Mr. Mizuko that were dated April 21st. Okay, but he gave you a prior letter explaining to you the, uh, the, oh yes, uh, yes he did. Okay, that is. I I didn't understand what you were asking. Yeah, I think it'd be helpful for the commission to review that letter and then to go back to the the, the give and take okay. if we can do it. Okay. This is the Inland Wetlands application itself. Uh, there, I'm, I'm not sure if there was, if, if you're yeah, not, uh, alluding to, yes? We're still seeing yes. the letter you put up. Oh, sorry. You just want to put that up as a point to start from. I rely on Mike to do it, but he's not here. <laughs> I, I I should I should note, Mr. Marcus, that uh, the the items that we received uh, for for this modification uh, were the revised uh, site plans. Correct. The set of drainage calculations. Correct. Uh, this uh, inland wetlands application, which I have uh, on my screen pr uh, presently. Uh, yeah. I'm currently on the second uh, sheet of such, which describes uh, the revision in some detail, at least. I think it would be appropriate for Mr. Marcus to take us through those in. Yeah, so if you start in paragraph five of the, of the, uh, of the uh, application, uh, that describes obviously what we're gonna do. Now this project was originally a single building of 11 residential two bedroom units. So it was a much larger footprint and structure that has now uh, changed significantly. Uh, the prior application had received approval from Inland Wetlands uh, because there are no wetlands or watercourses on the site in the uh, 
the area where the wetlands exist offsite uh, are at a great distance. So the, the this paragraph uh, it, it, uh, in paragraph five of the application, uh, as you can see, the project engineer has indicated no wetlands exist on the site. Uh, there is an existing drainage discharge in an associated wetland just off to the site, uh, as well as a vernal pool uh, to the west. So you got the uh, wetlands to the north and a vernal pool to the west. And that was not, nothing has changed from the original application. So the impact uh, on the 11 unit project to those wet, wetlands and water courses was, uh, was not a problem. Uh, it didn't require any other considerations other than the treatment of the site drainage that was proposed. So then if you jump down into paragraph six, the previous proof plan, uh, as I said, had the 11 units, uh, but based on a denial from PNZ and a long, uh, well, a lawsuit appealing the denial of uh, a significant discussion uh, with the commission, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission has now uh, indicated that subject to a report from wetlands, tomorrow night they will act to settle the lawsuit uh, because they were satisfied with the, uh, with the uh, significant reduction. Essentially, the project has been cut in half, but two of the uh, uh, units are still going to remain as affordable housing opportunity units under the act. So the since there were no direct impacts in the impervious plan, uh, in the prior plan, excuse the previous plan, um, the that would be an alternative to this plan. The revised plan reduces everything. It reduces uh, the impacts, obviously, for, on the regulated area because the impervious surfaces have been reduced. Uh, and a rain garden has been... Uh, added to the plan to replace what was going to be a large underground detention system. When the parking area and the impervious surfaces were reduced, the need to have a, uh, a significant drainage system underground uh, disappeared. Uh, the, that drainage system was no longer required. And the better plan, we thought, was to, uh, to do the rain garden. A, because it actually creates a wetland habitat that didn't exist on the site. And B, it will treat any of the uh, surface waters uh, as a, uh, that do not go into the uh, uh, drainage system. So essentially, uh, I don't wanna make this really too simplistic, but what we're doing is we're taking a project that oh, was wow. twice the size and we are reducing it. Uh, and accordingly, any impact that was not a problem when the project was twice the size is less of a problem today. So uh, that's that's where we are. But Mr. Now, Mark, do you have to share the plans that show the location of the rain garden, please? You have them there, uh, David, because you probably yeah, I, I I will bring those up, and and I'm sure through my comments to the to the commission, I will um, perhaps give give a, dis a description that may embellish what you've already done. Yeah, let me pull that up on my screen. Uh, one second, please. Okay, can everybody see this screen? I'm good. Okay, I will zoom in on it here so that everybody can get a better focus as to what we're looking at. You can stop right there probably. That's, that's probably as good a shot. Uh, so again, if you can see that the buildings have been placed apart on the site before it one was one more massive structure. Yeah. And the parking area 
obviously it's been moved because it's now between the buildings where before it was in front of the buildings and much uh, closer to the uh, existing neighbor that whose whose lot is if you're looking at the screen to our right, the T probably. probably. Excuse but, me, Mr. Marcus. I see that Mr. Mazuka has joined. If you want to hand the mic over to him, or if you want to continue, that's fine with us. Uh, Mike, Mike Mazuko, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you. I was just. Uh, let me tell you what we've done up to this point because uh, we were just looking at the actual modified plan. I explained to him, we looked at your application uh, that basically we cut the 11 units down into six and separated the buildings, moved the parking in between, which freed up this area that we're about to discuss. Why don't you tell them the, the concept of the rain garden and how that's gonna work and why it's, uh, we think the, the superior uh, plan over the former underground detention. You can take oh. it from there. Or for the record, Mike Mazuko, professional engineer. My office is in Danbury representing the applicant. And the, the big thing is just a reduction of the scope of the project, as Neil had said, from 11 units to six and associated reduction in the parking. And that allowed us room to put a rain garden in as opposed to the uh, underground uh, detention galleries that were proposed originally. And it also, we had a series of catch basins before. Now we're basically sheet flowing everything from the parking lot to a gap in the curbing to a four bay area for heavy sediment removal before it enters into the rain garden. And then we have an elevated outlet control device, a six inch orifice. And that will allow for the water quality volume to be stored in the rain garden before it leaves and attenuate the remaining storm events up to the 25 year. And we also obviously shifted the orientation of the buildings. And one of the reasons for that was to provide some, some space, recreation space behind the, each of the units. And in addition to the changes, and, and there was a lot of discussion about the pipe under the building originally with the revision, we were able to change that and eliminate the pipe under the building. So we're going around the backside of units one through three. And I don't know if Neil had mentioned, but in addition to the reductions, the driveway width changed from 24 to 20 feet. So it basically just took off both sides and, and brought the driveway in. And so that further reduced impervious services. And we do have the stormwater management system out by the road pretty much remain the same. That didn't change too much. So Mike, on the rain garden, just if I may, it's different than a retention pond, if I recall correctly. It's it's not very deep. And, uh, it's, it'll hold the water temporarily, and then it filtrates into the ground. Is that correct? That's correct. And it's all it's all planted. We have a plan <laughs> a planting schedule for plantings of the whole rain garden, but it's it's sim it's similar to a detention basin. It, it works in in much the same way. But the big one here is it does hold a water quality volume. So the smaller storm events will drain into it and it'll just stay there and it will stay amongst the plantings and, and infiltrate into the ground. So it's marshy and um, what's the, the deepest part of it? I mean, how deep does it go? Just curious. I think it was I'd have to go back to the other drawing, but I think it was not a big deal. I was just curious. Yeah, it was like two and a half or three feet. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, that's okay. 
Mr. Wait. Mizuko, if it's easier, would you like to have screen sharing uh, capabilities so that you can uh, go over your comments yourself, or do you prefer me to continue sharing? I think this is working out okay, David. Okay. That's all the questions I had, Mr. Mizuko. So yeah, if, you, if with regard to, there was also a reduction in the retaining wall. So if you're looking at this picture, you'll see just to the to the right or the east of the rain garden, we have a, just a small retaining wall there. It was always, there was always a retaining wall there, but it's less now before the parking lot was sort of parallel to that retaining wall and much closer. And the two outlets that didn't change. We had the, the two 10 inch, outlets we originally had one there was some concern about blockage of the inlet and then backing up water onto the neighbor's property so we added the second 10 inch pipe and that remains the same that really didn't change at all correct yep Mike, I'm sorry, just for my education, the rain garden, there's numbers from three to, I think it was 14. What do those numbers represent? Oh, that's, if you go back to that plan, there's, if you look to the right, you'll see the rain garden plant list. Oh, okay. Every one of them numbers corresponds to the plant list in the, in the basin or rain Great. garden. Thank you. I, I didn't see the list. Thank you. You're welcome. It's like painting, Pat, like painting by connecting the dots. We do it so the, the, the gardening crew can do a better job. Yeah, and then one of the other things, I know it's not really a wetlands issue, but I know that it had come up in the discussions about the vernal pool and the lighting. We've reduced the site lighting quite a bit. We don't have any high pole lighting. It's all low, eight feet. We have only a couple of eight foot posts and just some building mounted uh, flood lighting just off the corners of the buildings. To, to light the, the parking lot and walkways, things like that. Thank you. And I don't know if Neil mentioned that we did, originally with the 11 unit plan, we were proposing to extend the water from Taylor Avenue up Good Hill. With the reduction, we're now only proposing to do individual wells for each building. So there'll be a storage tank, like a, sort of a glorified system for the, the three units are in each building. And that's a two, the two dark circles, correct? Uh, near that, those are the silt pools, just so the, the millings and stuff from the, when they drill the well, oh, yeah. they'll sit there, but they're, they're right next to the, to, to the well location, yeah. Yep. And this is city sewer, right? Mr. Yes, that remained the same. The only thing that changed with the sewer was because there's two buildings, there's two separate buildings. Those are served by laterals. The, the, the section of the line that came in that's near the, the dumpster pad, and you can see it's a little bit shaded there, but that is an easement because that will then become a main that the town of Bethel will, will take over and will be theirs or considered theirs and have easements over that. The owner of the property will maintain the laterals, but the town will maintain the main. Good, thank you. Commissioners have any questions for Mr. Mazuka or Mr. Marcus? David. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ken. Uh, I'll, I'll just chime in here and, and I'll do it briefly just just to clarify a few things. And, and this is mainly going to be from uh, what I have in my comments. I'm, I'm hopefully they're go they're coming up on your <clears throat> uh, currently. If they're not, let me know. We're not seeing anything except you. Okay. Here we are. 
Sorry about that. Are they coming up now? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So I, I just I just want to clarify a, a, a few things just to make sure that, that everybody's on the right page. And this is more of an embellishment of what Attorney Marcus and, and Mr. Mizuko have already said. Uh, I, I have here, um, you know, my my reports to the to the commission. Uh, what you're looking at in this table uh, right here, these are the existing conditions. These these you know are 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 you know essentially going to be unchanged. Uh, and then this these were the proposed uh, disturbances for the previous application that the commission proposed. Uh, for, for what I have calculated and for what the applicant has provided, uh, there is a slight decrease in the upland review area that's proposed to be disturbed. I, th I think it comes out to be uh, 700, 7 acre. And then there's a slight decrease in the net fill that is going to be brought on site. That is to say um, that there may be more, more material that gets excavated but there will be less material that has to get, um, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that wrong. There may be more material that needs to be excavated in, in, in the form of five cubic yards, um, but there uh, will be less material that's brought onto the site. So, so as a whole, this site uh, or this modification, it's, it's proposal to disturb less area and to have less material brought into uh, that's area that's that's being disturbed. I, I just wanted to make sure that that was that that was clarified. And and Mr. and Attorney Marcus and Mr. Mazuko, if I am speaking out of bounds, please please correct me if if, if I need to be. Uh, the, the rest of my uh, my comments here, they're just uh, rehashes of previous reports from professional soil scientists and professional wetland scientists uh, for previous applications. They were. Jim McManus and Eric Davison, respectively. Uh, the, the, the main comments that, that I would have for this application, um, I, I, I think we've touched on some of them um, already in the form of the rain garden. The, the only one, other one that I would have that, that the commission should perhaps be considerate of is um, where we are, um, extending our grading to with respect to uh, the, the watershed areas. Uh, maybe I'm not phrasing myself correctly. I'm, I'm sure uh, that the plans will um, allude to what my um, comments are, are trying to get at, but there is, um, there is a line type that, that's shown on one of the uh, sheets in the site plan sheet set that uh, if, if, it, if it does uh, show what I think it is, then it, it, it's more or less confirming that the regulated activities do not include anything that's going on within the drainage area that would otherwise go to the offsite vernal pool to the west of the project site. Um, that, that's what I was trying to, um, you know, clarify from the applicant that that's really the only thing I, I think the, the commission would uh, really have to concern. Other, otherwise, you, you, you do have a decrease in the impervious area. It, it, it's um, the, the, the thought process was having the driveway and um, the, the components here where my cursor are are more or less the same, but you have a smaller impervious area with the parking lot and a smaller impervious area that would stem from uh, the two structures that are being proposed in uh, replacing the larger 11 unit structure that originally was, I think, somewhere in, in this orientation. Uh, apart from that, I, I don't have anything else uh, for the commission tonight. Okay. <clears throat> I would... Uh make a motion that we close the review and i believe before the end of this meeting we'll need to take a vote on this project do i have that right david second I'm, that motion thank you peter david you were on mute when you were speaking yeah i i'm sorry i i would just want to to confirm with with the commission in in us concluding this site plan review uh, that we would have a consensus to otherwise 
uh, you know, make it render a decision. Uh, it seems to be in the form of an approval um, after we conclude um, our other uh, items on the agenda for this evening. Yes. Right. Yep. Peter. Yep. Laura, have you reviewed the? Uh, I'm good. Laura, have you reviewed all the materials? Some of it. All right, we will pick this up again before the end of the meeting. Uh, the next item on the agenda is Chestnut Ridge Road, number 117, two lot subdivision with new driveway and associated site improvements within the regulated upland review area. Um, I'm not sure who's here representing the applicant. Uh, Mark Lancor with uh, Dimar. I'm the agent engineer for the applicant. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Stevens. So if you want, I can, uh, I can, I can start uh, and introduce myself first. This is I'm Mark Lancor. I'm the principal engineer with Dimar located in Southbury, Connecticut and representing uh, David and Tamar Ortiz who have a purchased a piece of property of about 2.84 acres on um, Chestnut Ridge Road. Um, if I could, if it's possible, David, maybe you can share the screen with me so I can at least introduce the uh, application to the commission. Certainly, Mr. Lancor, screen sharing is enabled. Now, you always have to give me this and always I get screwed, I screw this up all the time, but I will get it, <laughs> okay. If, if you would prefer me to share it in, in, in your stead, Mr. Lancor, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, I'm gonna try, here we go. Can you see that? We see your files. You see my file, there's, the, so I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna stop share and then I'm gonna try it again. Uh, there we go. Can you see that? Yes. You could make it a little bigger, it'd be helpful for some of the older eyes on the call. So I'm gonna enlarge this because I have the same problem as everybody else. I can't see a thing. Thank you. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, with that, um, again, Mark Lankor for the Ortizes. Uh, just a little background on this. Um, the Ortizes actually bought this parcel from Mr. Cole and Ms. Madlick, who are their neighbors to the south. And uh, the original property, and you can see in the area here where the brown housing is, this here is what exists on the property today. Uh, with a driveway that actually crosses, which is Simpog Brook, which is the formal name of the brook that runs in this direction here on the eastern side of the property. Uh, you know, with the home right now, it's unoccupied. Uh, they're in the process of renovating that particular structure. Um, they got approval back in uh, mid-2020 uh, to upgrade the septic system and come in and gut the house and do some renovation work because their plan is, is what they wanna do is they actually wanna sell this piece uh, itself. And the whole process was to subdivide or resubdivide the property into two lots because the original subdivision occurred with Mr. Cole when he divided the original 2.84 acres off of his parcel itself. So. You know, with that, um, the total site wetlands on the site, it's located in this green corridor here. It's the Simplog Brook itself. It's about 0 0.07 acres associated with that in the access way. And uh, lot number one actually has a man-made pond. This area right here where my hand is, is a man-made pond, which is about uh, 25 feet wide, 35 feet long masonry built all the way around it with a little overflow spillway here uh, that eventually dives into the brook, goes under the culvert that currently exists for lot one. And uh, the pond is really kind of silted in over the years. It's been there for some time. It maybe holds about two feet of water in it. And then between the pond and the road, is a series of uh, some invasive materials along this area and some thinly uh, area of trees, 
hardwoods in this particular area, but very thin. But then when you go to the western side of the brook, up in this section here, gets into more densely populated hardwoods and firs and some hemlocks that I suspect were planted when this house was built to buffer between here and the neighbor to the to the south. Just for a point, yep. for my own um, clarification, please. Sure. I'm looking at this and Chestnut Ridge Road, which direction is downtown Bethel from here? You can just show me on the map. You know what? You're you're better at this than myself. You may have to ask David. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I can give some geographic bearing. Uh, if, I if, you if, you, me. I if you go towards the top of the map, you're going towards downtown Bethel. That that's correct. That's correct. Okay. North. So, so yeah. downtown north. Bethel is is north of this subject property. Right. If you were heading south from downtown Bethel, this parcel would be on your okay. right. Going up the hill. Okay. That's correct. Right. Right. Yep. This is going up the hill here, that direction. Exactly. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Uh, <clears throat> so, with that, uh, you know, the again, the pond is here, and the basic, the rest of the property is pretty well wooded. Uh, to the direct west is property of town of Bethel, open space. Uh, to the north is a uh, subdivision that was created maybe I can't five, six, seven years ago. Three lot subdivision, one is this area over here, house exists over here. And then our neighbor's house exists some substantial distance from, from this edge. Now, the relationship between Mr. Noel and Ortiz, Mr. and Dave Ortiz has been great. He offered. Uh, in terms of providing the access way actually to the to the uh, to the south here in which he will be granting an access way easement across this portion in order to gain access to the property here and i will get into why that is beneficial for this project well can i ask a question here this is sure so there is currently i believe it's an earthen Bridge with some kind of um, culvert underneath it that crosses the creek, right, and goes right onto the property. Yep. I'm curious why the plan would not include making that a common drive and eliminating the need to disturb the wetlands with another bridge. Good question, but it's one that's been thought about and looked at. One, common drives are not allowed. Okay. Well, I don't believe that to be or true. an R20 zone. I'm in drive. This is an R20 zone. So we actually looked at that. But, and we actually had that discussion with PNZ. When we started this project out, we actually sat down with David and Beth to go over our options of what we could do. One of the things that's with this particular lot itself is even access way to get into. This is a pretty steeply sloped area right here. And it's bounded by some bedrock along this edge. Yep. So it's pretty, it's even pretty tough to think about coming here. This direction, this is where the septic area is to come in from this direction over here. Uh, but again, when we sat down, common driveways in an R20 zone are not permitted activities. And that was pretty well taken with, uh, with Beth. So that left us with the option of creating a new crossing and the options, and I'll go over where the second option was, but this is the preferred option that we, we, uh, we have presented at this location here, uh, <clears throat> basically because of also the relationship with our neighbor. Um, to speak about what's going on in the property, when they built the subdivision to the north, there's a huge encroachment. They built a drainage ditch right along this edge that comes onto our property. It comes over and then discharges into the brook over here. Uh, that was done prior to uh, David actually purchasing the property. But when the survey was done, we saw that this was uh, created here. It takes a substantial amount of water off the hill and it also is close proximity to the person's driveway here. So when we were looking at the options of where to cross, uh, we were trying to actually avoid this area 
because David would not is is looking at the Ortiz's are looking to approach this property owner. They want to remedy this situation, but to remedy that situation, I believe is also going to cause a significant issue with their current house and driveway. So, um, you know, in the spirit of, of trying to be good neighbors and then having the cooperation of Mr. O, uh, and I'll go over the other alternative. Uh, this was the most preferred and prudent alternative for us to select. So in the process of, of developing the plan, uh, the house is up in the back. This is considered lot number two, which is uh, close to two acres. Lot number one is approximately 0 0.8, 0 0.9 acres. And um, in creating this lot, um, it's to take the house up to the top of the hill. And we have created a network, a stormwater management system that incorporates a pretty substantial, um, this is a uh, you know, rain garden in this location and taking the drainage that comes off of the roofs and the one inch flush and some of the areas that come off the driveway to actually run that into this rain garden, which is well oversized than what is actually needed for the one inch flush. And then the stormwater management system would connect with a series of yard drains because it is a hill and you got to recognize that you want to control the water. And that water then will come down to a, what we call a cyclone unit. It's a pretreatment unit at this location here, very similar to uh, CDS or any dynamic separator. That's what would collect the water off of here. And then that would discharge, you know, into the uh, northerly side uh, of where our culvert crossing is and discharge to what is now the pond area located on lot one, which is a significant uh, buffer and energy dissipation system naturally that occurs here. Now, when we went through and looked at the alternatives for the culvert, uh, that was, uh, took some time. Uh, we had a lot of communications with the staff, uh, also with uh, uh, town consultant, uh, Wright Pierce, uh, both your engineers uh, that looked at this and with your public works department. And the uh, culvert was sized in accordance with what was agreed to as a rate of flow that would be acceptable to the town or in the brook. As a background, um, there's over 203 acres, 213 acres that actually drains to this point. And upstream, there's a number of culvert crossings that occur on other driveways and by the town. So the agreement with the town and the town consultant and public works director is being that the culvert up off of Chestnut Ridge uphill of us was replaced not too long ago. And there is no uh, desire or anything to do anything further to upgrade that culvert. So that culvert that the town owns is actually the controlling factor of what actually uh, uh, models or what actually is uh, controlling the amount of water that's being allowed to be passed uh, into the brook. So that is the uh, uh, precept to what the design basis was. And that's what we followed. And um, the culvert that we are proposing is a 71 inch wide, 41 inch high uh, aluminum um, uh, arch culvert that's going to be recessed into the ground so that we can apply natural stone to the bottom in order to mimic the existing uh, stream bed conditions. We did look at a number of alternatives when it came to culverts. Um, I mean, everybody can, you can consider whether it's a three-sided box culvert or four-sided and an extended depth box culvert or an arch. Those particular devices would be two and a half to three times the cost of this particular kind of uh, culvert, which is uh, has a longevity of more than 50 years in terms of its uh, capacity to for serviceability, but it's significantly less money uh, than it would be for anything, uh, like I say, two and a half to three times for a box or extended box culvert, which is wouldn't be prudent for this particular uh, application for a driveway and it would be cost prohibitive to my client. Um, and this has all been run by, again, your town consultant 
and it's not been anything that it's been received uh, as uh, as the as a feasible alternative to other other options. Um, so the other thing that I want uh, would want to to point out is that the amount of uh, of uh, fill that would be in the in the in the stream quarter just this is a stream quarter it doesn't have much associated with wetlands pretty well established stable sides pretty well armored well uh, well stabilized along its uh, long its quarter so this is about 52 feet that we would end up disturbing of uh, of the stream and then again like i said mimicking the bottom with a uh, natural stone and the uh, sides are come up pretty quick so this is you know it's not like you've got a broad breadth here of wetlands or this is uh, the gradient up there is, is over 12, 14%. So uh, it's well established that the uh, area is pretty much upland review and uh, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't have really any wetland associated plant material that uh, flanks the, uh, the stream corridor itself. Uh, one of the things that we're proposing and, and, and David sent us uh, his comments, I appreciate the fact that he got his comments to us early, back on the 12th. Uh, it's not too often that we get comments uh, early. Uh, so we were able to address those comments and sent a, a letter in on last Friday with revisions to the plan to address his particular comments, uh, which were centered around erosion control. Uh, if we were gonna provide any mitigation along the stream corridor here, which we did add uh, mitigation of adding, uh, uh, I believe it's 20 uh, types, 20 plants to actually armor, uh, flank the sides here of the crossing here that are uh, obligated to upland plants that would that would work well in this particular area. And then um, we uh, addressed other questions that he had that were more technical in nature, but I believe uh, we've been able to do that and, and address each one of them. As he uh, as he pointed out, uh, some of those included like a washout basin, which we've included here. Some additional notations where the stockpiles are going to be added. Some additional silt fence along this particular area here, and then uh, address the idea the, the comments regarding uh, 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 snow snow removal. Well, like with any any driveway, especially a long driveway like this. Uh, snow removal is going to be done by wind road to the side up to the point and they'll locate some piles up in terms of the end of the driveway but you don't use the driveway as a place to place place snow so I don't anticipate that that's going to be the issue and then when it came to uh, de-icing materials uh, we've indicated that our client has no interest of using de-icing if anything they would use if they necessary typical sand that would be put on a driveway for icing materials if that was required from when they plow the driveway or when they want to treat it. Um, and then I think one of the other things is I want to show you an alternate plan. And I'm gonna see if I can, uh, if I can take this down and see if I can get to another. I may have to, I don't have it here. So I may have to uh, close this one out. Let me just see if I can bring this up. Oh, I'm going to have to restop share. I'm going to have to go back, open that up, see if I can get it open here. Why it's not coming up. Hmm. It's not. Oh, let me see. New share. Let's see. I'm not getting this. Let me just try. Try again with me, uh, David. Just share it again. I'm going to try to get this drawing up. Unless it's in your package, uh, it's one of the driveway alternative. It's, I think, C12 or whatever, if you might find it. Sure. I, I, I will. Um, I need... just wanted to present to the commission the alternative plan for the driveway. Right, right. Understood. Uh, 
that's the color right there. There you go. We might just be able to blow that up a little bit. So, so this was the location actually to the north. And when you look at the direct impacts and the indirect impacts in the upland review area, they're pretty much the same or similar to what we're suggesting. The difference is, is that we impact that drainage ditch, which we're trying to avoid so that our client can make arrangements with working something out with our, <laughs> with our neighbor. And it also includes 150, it's 150 feet longer in driveway length and there's actually more cut involved. So the earth disturbance is gonna be greater. The amount of impervious area is gonna be greater and the disruption to that drainage ditch is gonna be there. And it's basically gonna accomplish the same thing in terms of uh, the impact to the direct impacts to the wetlands and the indirect impacts to the upland review area. So we felt that the more prudent alternative was the alternative that we provided. Um, so if that's it, that's, um, and then <clears throat> so I think that's uh, pretty much what I've got to offer. And I'm very much uh, interested to hear any questions that you might have and, and hopefully I can answer. Commission, any questions? I don't have any, Craig Johnson. None. David, did you want to pull up a view for the commission to see this live and in person in lieu of a site walk? Do you have the ability to do that? Sure, I, I can pull that up. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Yep. This appears to have been taken from August of 2014. But this shows Chestnut Ridge Road going to the south. And this shows Chestnut Ridge Road going to the north. I believe as is shown on the site plans, the driveway that exists is this driveway here. And the creek is just beyond this green. I, I would I would say it is within David, you've got it in the right location where your arrow is is just and then it pulls back right at that pole right there. You can see that pole. It actually then goes a little bit more west and doesn't follow. Yeah, it goes further in. The pond is just below that, uh, just below that pole. Yep. Back up where you were. Yeah. So it. it's just it's so from there. You can't uh, see my cursor, but I is just after the pole to the to the to the south of the pole, and then the um, the uh, pond is uh, you know maybe about twenty feet north of the pole. It, you almost can see there's an opening right in the. You can almost a little bit of an opening. Uh, further, if you put that cursor further to the your right, keep going to your right. Yeah, it's it's right in that area there. It's the pole right there is where the pond is. So, Mr. Lancor, maybe you mentioned it and I missed. Yeah. It. Um, what is the calculation for any increased flow into the pond? Is it any, or is it going to be none, or? Uh, so here's, here's the reality. The reality is, is that the amount of, and we had this uh, conversation with the town consultant um, in terms of the initial questions that we had was, are you going to request, require us to do detention on site? I mean, it's an obvious question that everybody asks. Yeah. And um, their conclusion was based on the C and looking at TR20, TR55, the CN values don't alter all that much because most of the CN values are controlled by what's up on the town's land. So the uh, bedrock that's an outcropping and when you start looking at all the, the, uh, the coverage numbers, the CN values didn't alter that much and the time of concentrations didn't alter at all because of where 
where it lays. So their conclusion to us was concentrate on water quality. Don't concentrate on the water quantity coming off the lot. The stream bed itself, we have nothing outside of we're discharging and we will have some retention that will be in the water quality rain garden because we oversized it and we oversized it for a reason is to give some buffering, even though we didn't to minus it down to the, the minimal, we actually increased the size and it's probably more than two times necessary. So is because in a heavy rain, right? Not even an extra heavy rain and just a heavy rain. Right. That pond turns into Niagara Falls when the water's coming over the edge there. Uh, uh, Mr. Stevens, you're 100. I've been there. I've seen it. It's not, it's an old farm pond that somebody created when they were farming the land or whatever they did. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if that's where the cattle came down to drink, you know, because it, it actually has got stairs that come right down to the edge of the pond that were built into the masonry. So I, I agree, I agree. I just wanna make sure that the culvert that's being proposed is going to handle that increase in flow in just a normal rainstorm, not even a 25 year storm, just in a normal rainstorm. I, and the reason I know this, I live up the street, so I know what the oh, flow you do. You do, okay. So, so to your point, um, so what we did is whatever the culvert upstream that the town controls. Where is that culvert? Upstream? Oh, it's a, uh, it's a quarter mile up the road. It's by, there's a, a couple of larger ponds uh, yeah. that are part of the watershed that yeah. come off of it. And um, you can see it. Yeah, David, if you can, uh, you can see where we are. Yeah. So, so this won't show the, the subdivision that's proposed, but this is 117 Chestnut Ridge Road in its current configuration. And I think that's the pond that's being discussed, Mr. Lincoln, yes. if I'm correct. Yes. Okay. So there's a culvert crossing at that driveway, at uh, this driveway you can see right there where it says 43.09. That is a uh, small, I believe it's uh, either a 36 inch or whatever. That culvert, if anybody ever comes in, I will tell you, if anybody ever comes in looking for a request, they need to upgrade that culvert because there's no question that that culvert overtops. And then when you go a little further up, you can see where it crosses the road. Yep. That is where the town replaced that culvert not too long ago. Um, so we modeled that uh, based on what the uh, Wright Pierce asked us to model it for in terms of what, how much flow that can take before it breaches the road. So Dave, that culvert, David, is just beyond what we call the McNichol property, where that, that first pond is there on the right, on the right-hand side of Chestnut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this, it flows into the stream and it, then it goes down under the road and that culvert was replaced by the town recently? Uh, not, not, not uh, within the last five years, something of that five or six years, whatever. No one knows exactly when, but you can tell by the culvert in terms of its color and everything else that it's not that old and the armoring is not that old. Well, so we and actually, it's probably neither here nor there for yeah. the property in question, but I've lived there 26 years and that culvert has not been replaced since I've been. So maybe they did it in the middle of the night. I don't know. But <laughs> that's, I mean, it's DPW kind of said, no, we've got no interest in replacing it because we've done some work there. So your studies, and, and I hate to keep no. on this, but I know how that water flows. Your studies confirm that the culvert you want to place there is going to handle that flow and not cause any adverse backups and flowing onto adjacent properties. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Right. Thank and, you. Very uh, much. So that's, you know, that's, that's where we are with the culvert. And uh, so what we did is whatever the value is or the amount of flow that was calculated to the town's culvert, then we added the balance of the drainage basin to our culvert. And our culvert is, has the ability to pass 135 CFS and the town's, um, the town is rated for 96. 
your culvert, I think, is proposed to be almost six feet tall and maybe five feet wide. I know it's round, but it's actually it's 74 inches wide and 41 inches high. OK, so higher. OK, I have the numbers. Yeah, it, it, it try to mimic the base of the stream bed as close as we can get it. So thank you very much. Yeah. Commission, any other questions? Pat? Of course, I got a question. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Lancor, I, yes. I might have misunderstood uh, your answer, and I apologize. I'm not an engineer. Are you saying that you will have increased runoff on from this development after the project is done from then pre? No, okay. we're saying that the uh, pre and post valuations, when you look at the numbers that go into the model are basically the same. So therefore you would not increase it based on that number. And that's what was concluded even by the town engineer. All right, so your rain garden is basically uh, the, the tensioning enough of the water, is that? Oh yes, for sure. For sure. And uh, putting the um, culvert bridge in, how, how are you expecting to do that? In the middle of the night. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> only the town does that. I'm no. only kidding. I, no, I mean, um, no, you it's water coming through there. How, is how, there how will it be done? So this is one of the advantages that we have with using a lightweight culvert. I mean, it's an aluminized metal. Yep. Uh, we don't need to come in with a crane. We can do it with a rather loader. So the way it's going to be done is, is that we have prescribed on the map in the do, in our document that they have to do it between uh, July 1 and uh, October 15th. Dry season. Okay. During the dry season. And quite frankly, it's going to be done in the dry season because I've been down there in that brook. Uh, yes, that, that brook has what we call as a flash brook which is when you get a rainfall heavy, it flashes through, but it also dies down very fast. So uh, you do it during the summer. We're gonna sandbag the upfront end. You got a dewatering pit that goes in that would go into a, uh, um, into a dirt bag so that all the sediment gets in and then that gets flows below the stream crossing. Then they'll be able to come in, excavate out, set the bed and drop the pipe in pretty fast because well one of the uh we have a pretty well detailed sequence here all the material has to be on site before they do work okay. so and i can tell you i think everybody knows this trying to buy materials right now is impossible i went and you'll this is this is just for very short my wife and i went to go grab to buy a new stove top i gotta wait four months to get it Mm -hmm. four months so builders are going crazy they can't buy materials so even if uh right now if you were going to go buy a uh, uh a, a uh, fiberglass tank which is only made by two manufacturers they are 12 months out before delivery mm -hmm. so don't buy anything that's fiberglass right now so the, 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 this the plan the plan is to get all the materials here first and to be able to do it. And I, I hate to say the whole idea is once you get in here, you can get this thing done in three days. So, so you're basically going to go when the water level's low, dig it out, drop the pipe and, and yes. cover it. But you're going to have uh, you're going to have downstream so the sediment doesn't go into the pond. Right. Yep. Right. We're actually if you sandbag upstream and you put the dewatering pit upstream, you're pumping the water out and then through a dirt bag. And the dirt okay. bag is actually filtering before it goes into into the water again. Okay. And are there any uh, wing walls on it, or is it? Nope. Pipe? They're two. They're two very large flared ends. Okay. So, Absolutely. trying to keep it so it looks residential. Okay. And we've got uh, uh, wooden guide rails on both sides. And you may have stated this, Mr. Rancourt, and I apologize if you did. Will the drive covering the culvert and going up to the new home be asphalt or gravel? It's going to have to be asphalt. And the reason is, is because of the percent grade. Okay. We're varying around 11.9% until you get up to the top. It's quite a hill there. 
It, it, it is. And I told my client, this has been a very interesting subdivision to do for a lot. So, um, but it's, uh, when you get up in the back, there is something up in the back that is quite spectacular. The rock formation up back there is absolutely gorgeous. And the bears don't eat much. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be hiber hibernating in a culvert now. Who you yeah, can oh, geez. There you go. There you go. So, thank you very much. You're welcome. David, do you have any questions? Uh, no, no questions at, at this time, though. I, I would just like to clarify a couple of things for the commission, uh, just in terms of what we've been talking about. I There's a culvert construction plan uh, on uh, sheet C 8. That also has the sequence of, uh, sequence of construction uh, that, that alludes to what Mr. Lencore was describing with the time frame that they would have to install uh, the culvert. In other words, um, what, what they're saying uh, here for the sequence is that, and I quote, construction of driveway of the wetlands crossing shall commence any time from June 15th and be completed and stabilized no later than October 15th. So, so the, the time frame is, is more or less the same. In essence, it's, it's the dry season that you're going to be wanting to do uh, the, the work in. Um, the, the, the one other um, thing I, I'd like to add, uh, actually two, uh, is, is that for the regulated area that the commission is looking at, um, you know, the, what, where this activity is taking place, it's, it's not on um, 117 Chestnut Ridge Road itself, per se, it, it's going to be on uh, the property to the south. Uh, that's where the access easement that um, was described, at least if, if I'm, if I'm understanding this correctly, Mr. Lancor, um, yeah. that yeah. that's, that's where the activity that the commission is reviewing is going to be taking place. Um, one last thing would be, uh, it, it had been mentioned, and, and this happened so long ago, where we met with uh, Mark Lancor and, and Mr. Ortiz, um, where we had the pre-application meeting. Uh, Beth uh, Kavadna, the, the zoning official, uh, is on, and, and she can perhaps uh, em embellish on, um, you know, the, the regulations that would come into play as to uh, the R20 zone, which I believe uh, both parcels will be in, and why a, a common drive that would that um, that would otherwise be proposed to access these two um, is not allowed uh, in this zone. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, ma'am. Um, the the. The lot that we're, you're discussing this evening has the proper frontage for the zone in which it's lot, it lies. So therefore, if there was a need for the driveway to appear, <clears throat> um, there's plenty of room there for it to go on the other side. The, this is for convenience to put the driveway on the other property. So as far as the frontage requirements in the R20 zone, the existing lot meets it. It is not a rear lot. And and that frontage, I think, I think is is what I'm showing here with my cursor. If you guys can see, uh, see my screen, right? Beth, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, when you say it's not a rear lot, you mean the house in the back, even though it's in the back, is still considered because it has the footage is on the street a, a normal frontage lot, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Apart from that, I didn't have anything else at this time. David, I just want to add one thing because it's something that is important that you brought up and I think the commission should know this as well. You asked for us to give you a outline for taking care of invasive species. And there are a number of those along this corridor. And to that point, we did provide a pretty in-depth way of handling invasive species so that we could try to remove some of those because there are sections of this brook when you go up are absolutely gorgeous. And there are sections that 
could use improvement. One of those I will have to say is along this strip because there's a lot of invasives down here that could get removed and actually embellish and make the brook look nicer. So we did add that to your comments, David. Uh, there, it's in the plans in terms of handling it and making sure that it becomes part of your approval. Thank you. Yeah. David, I know it was mentioned Ray Pierce has been involved in the you know discussion of uh, subdivision. Has this been formally submitted to them for review? Oh yes, yes. It, it, uh, the 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 com the application itself has been forwarded to uh, Wright Pierce. In fact, their comments uh, were folded into the materials that the commission had for review tonight. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And we did have a public hearing with planning and zoning, which has closed. And so they will be. Hopefully, they're going to be looking. We need obviously a report from Wetlands before they can act. And that'll be, I believe, in two weeks. So. David, anything else from you? I'm OK. I have nothing further. I don't have anything else at this time, Ken. Thank you very much. And motion to close this review. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, David. You. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Informative. Okay, next item on the agenda is to review the Inland Wetlands Commission meeting minutes from our March 22nd meeting. Do we have any questions or comments with respect to those? Do we have a motion to approve? I have a motion to approve those excellent meeting minutes that were taken by Kathy. Second. All in I'll favor? I'll second. Thank you, Greg. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. David. Hang on here. Be before we get to me, uh, we're going to go backwards uh, just for a second because uh, remember these items, the the applications to site plans reviews that we've concluded. Uh, now would be the the period in the meeting where we would vote on those. Okay. Um, so so what I would have um, us do is is. Um, you know, uh, confirm the order in which we're reviewing them, in, in which case, if I'm remembering correctly, that first, uh, we would first have Francis J. Clark circle number 25, followed by the right of way project on Codfish Hill Road, and then uh, Good Hill Road, uh, number uh, nine, I have uh, draft resolutions of approval for all three of those. Um, I do not have one ready for Chestnut Ridge Road uh, 117 that we just heard, but if we want, if I think we should work on the other three. Okay. So shall we start with number 25, Francis J. Clark Circle? Yeah, the uh, draft resolution of approval that um, that I prepared was in the document materials for tonight's meeting. I will pull that up for you guys so you can take a look at that um, and uh, we can discuss going from there as uh, necessary. David, since we've all received it and you're gonna put it on the screen for our viewing, do we still have to read it into the record? Uh, I would have us read um, the section uh, on the last page that says, um, you know, the, the, the part for, for what we're basing our decision on, you can just list the reasons or the, the numbers for those. And the same would go for uh, the, the conditions that we have. I would just have the, I would just have whoever makes the motion uh, state what numbers. So in other words, we have uh, what appears to be one through nine, unless we strike something that it would be one through eight or one through 10 or what have you. But I'll start from the beginning. Okay. 
So these are the document materials that you guys reviewed. These are the site plan sheets uh, that you reviewed. This is a timeline of the application. Uh, in other words, uh, we began this in January. Um, we performed the site walk in February, opened the site plan review during that month, continued it last month and concluded it tonight. And these are the conditions that you guys would have, uh, you know, to discuss tonight. David, I thought I read in here somewhere about the, oh, uh, never mind, I see it. Number six, Pat. Yeah, I, I thought I had seen it, thank you. You're welcome. These are primarily standard requirements with the exception of number six, correct? David? Correct, number number six and number seven. Uh, I'm sorry, I hadn't seen number seven on the screen yet. Sorry, <laughs> my fault. Yep. Don't worry, Ken, us younger people saw it. Good, you're not that much younger. <laughs> Yeah, because I saw it too. I'm not going there, Peter. Anyone on the commission have any concerns with how this is written? Just those big red letters across the whole page. That's all right. We'll take those off. All right. Do we have a motion to approve this application and facilitate that approval via this letter? So, so here, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in to, to kind of give guidance for how we should phrase this. So uh, <laughs> what, what we're essentially looking for is, is a motion from the floor to approve the application based on the materials that were presented on the site plan sheet sets uh, with consideration to conditions one through nine and the reasonings one through three as shown on the draft resolution of approval dated April 21st, 2021. But that's what I said in a netter fashion, but that's fine. Well, can we just say, as David said? Yes. <laughs> All right. So I make a motion that we approve the um, the application based on the material that was reviewed with the considerations as outlined in one through nine, and I believe it was one through three in the draft letter of approval date. And Dave, I'm sorry, I don't see the date. It's today's date. Oh, okay. Uh, April 21st, excuse me. April 21st. Well, well, that'll, that, I mean, that'll be revised. This is the draft, but the, right. but the actual version will get revised for tomorrow. Right, and I referenced the draft, that's why. So, Sorry. okay, does that work? Yes. Okay. And I will you. second the, that, uh, Pat. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Greg? Aye. And I am in favor as well. So moved. Okay. So that takes care of Francis J. Clark 25. We are going on now to, uh, forgive me, uh, Codfish Hill Road right away. Okay. 
And this is more or less going to be the exact same thing. Description of the project, uh, materials that the commission reviewed, uh, including the site plans that uh, Larry Rizeki presented to us from Wright Pierce, along with some materials from uh, the state uh, DEEP for the National Diversity Database. Uh, we have the site plan sheet uh, list here, uh, the time frame for when we reviewed the commission, a list of conditions which are more or less standard boilerplate uh, one through six, and the reasonings for the basis of decision uh, standard boilerplate again uh, for uh, listed as one through three here. David, I had uh, one question. Ray Pierce, did they agree with uh, there was no uh, pre or post difference of water runoff? Uh, well, there there would be a conflict of, of interest as as Ray Pierce is our consulting engineer uh, for the land use commissions, and they are also the consulting engineer for um, the the public works department. Um, but but essentially, there there would be no conflicts. Uh, with the pre and post calculations for. I, I'm sorry, I was on the uh, wrong mindset. Got it. I was on the wrong uh, permit. No, that, that's okay. That's okay. This is the culvert crossing the street. That's that's correct. This is for Codfish Hill Road. This is not for. Got it. Um, any questions? No. We have a motion from the commission. Okay, I make a motion that we approve the application based on the material that was covered in the meeting, um, contingent upon the approvals and conformance guidelines one through six on the draft letter dated, and there are only six, correct? Yes, that's uh, dated correct. April 21st, 2021. With the reasonings, uh, uh, with the basis of findings uh, listed one through three. And with the basis of findings listed one through three. And I would second that motion by Pat, who eloquently <laughs> yeah. stated all those details. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Aye. Okay. Now on to Good Hill Road. So while you're pulling that up, Dave, that's where my question is. Does uh, our engineer agree with the pre and post calculations? Nothing uh, coming off? No difference? Uh, for, for Good Hill Road? Am I in the right one now? <laughs> nope, still the wrong one. Sorry, this, this is, is this yeah. is the modification for the approval. Uh, Sorry, for Pat. I'm thinking, that, that, I'm thinking okay. okay, thank you. Okay. I don't. I don't have any concerns with uh, Good Hill. I, I think uh, improvements were made with you know the reduction of the units. The only question I would have is. Um, they mentioned having um, play area out back, which is nice. Is there a fence uh, listed there between the, the uh, wetlands and the uh, end of the property there? Or well, build? so so the there are no wetlands proper on this parcel, Pat. I'm not sure what you're asking. It's the one right off the parcel. The the vernal pool. The vernal pool, yes. It, it, is there is there a fence between their property and Vernon Pool? I know there's a stone wall there. So there I is. Is it feasible to have a fence there or not? Uh, what for? What purpose would the would the fence serve? Well, if they're putting a play area right there, is to keep kids out of there and also keep material from flying into there. Um. Uh, so so this would be in the form of a of a solid fence, Pat. No, it could be like a, uh, what do you call it? A metal fence, a chain. Okay. Uh, I, I, I can't, I can't think of, of what purpose that, that fence would, would provide 
um, you know, in, in the way of, of any protections for the vernal okay. pool, um, you know, it, if, if you're talking about a, a fence delineating the edge of a play area, I would say that's more in the planning and zoning committee. No, 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 not at all. I'm thinking uh, keeping keeping garbage from flying in there, keeping kids from running in there, you know, that sort of thing. I know with, you know, young kids may build forts in there and stuff like that near the pool. So okay. Right. Well I I, I let's let's go back to the to the site plans here briefly if I may, because because I think there is a, a dumpster pad that is shown to have an enclosure for that very purpose. Yep, I did see that. Uh, and, and I and I would imagine that if there were concerns about uh, debris um, possibly escaping that the applicant would have received comments from the health department. I, I may be speaking yeah. on a term with that, but, but I, I think those uh, concerns about debris and what have you um, have already been addressed. Okay, um, and there will be some type of uh, fencing up there though during construction, obviously. Uh, if, if the commission is, in, is inclined to have orange construction fencing to uh, installs to delineate the edge of uh, or the limit of project disturbance, if you will. I, I don't see why that would be an issue. To have. You know what? I'm a big fan of those fencing. However, I believe there's a stone wall between their property and the thing. Right. Well, I'm fine, I'm fine at Lawrence. There's the, uh, I forget what they call that black uh, silt fencing. I'm fine if there's silt fencing because okay. they're, they're okay. going to know if they're going over a stone wall. The, I, would, I would be inclined to agree with you. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, that, that, that's okay. So the the draft resolution of, of approval uh, for Nine Good Hill Road, if if it is in fact on your screen, it was not included in uh, the, the 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 drive materials for tonight's meeting. That is not to say uh, that we can't make a vote on this tonight. I would just add that if we do, uh, we would have to, um, you know. Um, uh, you know, read through uh, the reasonings for our decision and make sure those are uh, on the record. You know, I, I, I do have this up on the screen, so I will slow scroll through this, if you will. Hey, Go ahead. Dave, if we move this to our special meeting in a couple of weeks, can we read this on our own versus taking the time tonight to read? The um, that, that, that's a good question. Uh, I, it's for, for lack of a better word, uh, this 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 application um, there there is a time frame that is that is beyond our purview, if you will, that we have to be cognizant of. Okay, so, so no. So the, so the sooner that we can render a decision for this, um, it, it it would be in the interest of other commissions or entities that have well, to. Let's, let's Dave, read that. through, if you would, those areas that have changed from the last. Certainly, uh, so. Uh, the, the areas that, that have changed, you know, these, what you're seeing on, on these first few pages here are a list of materials that have been reviewed with the previous applications, i.e. The, the initial denial um, that, that was uh, voted on by the commission and the subsequent approval, um, you know, and, and what we're looking at now tonight would be uh, you know, the, the new materials which comprise of the in the wetlands application itself, uh, the DEEP reporting form, which we received uh, this weekend. So let me modify that as we speak. Uh, the drainage calculations, the response comments from Mike Pierce Engineering, uh, the subsequent response from Mr. Mizuko, and my comments uh, that the commission uh, looked at. Uh, which I went over with you guys uh, earlier this meeting. Uh, the, the site plan sheet set more or less, the, the pages remain the same. The only thing that would change is the contents thereof, which we reviewed with Mr. Bazooko earlier tonight, and uh, the revision date, which I think got changed. Its last revision date is March 1st, 2021. Uh, the, the conditions that, that you're looking at uh, most of them are carryovers from uh, the previous approval. In fact, I think all of them are. 
Um, you know, I, I, I think the only thing that would possibly change is we would strike uh, condition 18 because it's to my understanding that these units won't have decks off the back of them. Um, you know, we can go through uh, these again if, if, the, if the commission so wishes, but there's nothing, um, at least for what I can see, that's, that's significant in the ways of uh, language changes for this approval. So I, I would like to make a motion, I may get it wrong, so David, correct me, that we approve this application and this resolution of approval based on the fact that we are approving those items that have changed based on the information you just cited that was received prior to this meeting and that the conditions are the same as they were previously, other than that last item we just looked at that we were going to strike item number 18. Correct. Based on that, I would make a motion that we approve this um, and issue such approval to the MLK. I can second that. Thank you, Peter. All in favor? Aye. Greg, are you still here? Yeah, that was me that said I. All right, sorry. You. You're you're <laughs> you're you're not showing on my screen, so I was apologizing. It's okay. That's good. So uh, so moved. Application approved. Okay, and and that is with consideration, of course, to the conditions one through three that I'm showing here on the screen. Just figure out. As I said, the conditions that were previously approved in the prior letter. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Marcus, always a pleasure. Uh, I was listening in, uh, and by the way, Greg, I can see you. You don't look any better, quite honestly. <laughs> we all look the same. <laughs> Good night, all. Thank you. Good night. David, next. Uh, so the, we're, we're at a point now. Um, it, the, the last two items that, that we reviewed on this agenda, we have a time frame for uh, 64 Worcester Street. We're going to be uh, discussing that further um, uh, during a special meeting on May 10th. Um, I, I would suggest that we do the same for uh, 117 Chestnut Ridge Road, as I do not have a draft resolution of approval prepared for uh, tonight's meeting. I, I apologize for that. Um, but if we had one prepare, if we had one, um, you know, if, if, if I had a draft resolution of approval that the commission would be inclined to make a decision on during our special meeting on May 10th, the Planning and Zoning Commission could in turn uh, make, make a decision on this application as they've already uh, closed on this as Mr. Lancor uh, indicated earlier uh, during their meeting on uh, May 11th, which is the following day. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to keep, um, you know, a a applications moving. We've had a lot of material that has come uh, forth with us within the past few months. I, I appreciate you guys, um, you know, having digested all this material for tonight. Um, and, and if we could facilitate having um, Chestnut Ridge Road 117 on, on that meeting, I think that would also be a good idea. So I'll make a motion that we cover both 64 Wooster Street and 117 Chestnut Ridge Road at our special meeting on May the 10th at 7 p.m. Um, do I have a second for that? A second that emotion. Thank you, Peter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay. Uh, now to get back to where we were uh, with the agent report. Thank you very much for uh, waiting on that, guys. Let me pull that up for you. Question for a procedural question, David. Go ahead. Um, what is the protocol for deferring these four items to our next um, regular meeting? Oh, we, we would just table them. 
if, if, if the commission is so inclined to, to table these, I have no problem with that. I would suggest that in view of the time and the time we've been on the call so far, if these are not urgent matters, that we table them until our next regular meeting on May the 24th. They are just reference materials. and be more than happy to table them. Thank you very much. There's one other thing here, commissioner comments, public hearings, notice signs. Do you have an update on that, David, or has that just been left on the agenda? That, that's, that's been a placeholder. I, I, I think that's, um, it would be a disservice for us to try to get into the weeds on that topic tonight. Oh, but have no fear. <laughs> We're not going to cover that tonight. I just wanted to know if it was a placeholder or if it was. Ben, what was that? This would be our discussion on the public hearing notice signs. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. David, anything else you would like to cover with the commission this evening? Uh, not at this time, apart from thank you very much for your patience and your having gone through this material. Um, much appreciated. I commend you guys for uh, having kept up with everything. I thank the commission for your dedication to getting this job done and look forward to meeting with all of you again on May the 10th. With that, I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Damn, I got beat. Thank you. Did. Have a good evening. Have a nice evening, everyone. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Thank, thank you, guys. Yep, you're welcome, guys. Good night.